Southern Brazil hit by worst floods in more than 80 years. Colombia breaks diplomatic ties with Israel. Solomon Islands' new PM is likely to keep closed China ties. UK begins detaining migrants set to be deported to Rwanda. South Korea considers joining a UK-US alliance. Nestlé adds sugars to baby food in low-income countries. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It's Monday, May 6th, and here are your top stories. The state civil defense agency said Friday that heavy rains in the southern Brazilian state of Rio Grande do Sul killed 39 people, with another 68 still missing, as record-breaking floods devastated cities and forced thousands to leave their homes. It was the fourth such environmental disaster in a year following floods in July, September and November 2023 that killed 75 people in total. According to the Brazilian Geological Service, the flooding statewide has surpassed that seen during a historic 1941 deluge. In some cities, water levels were at their highest since records began nearly 150 years ago. On Thursday, a dam at a hydroelectric plant between the cities of Bento Goncalves and Cotipora partially collapsed and entire cities in the Taquari River Valley, like Legido and Estrela, were completely overtaken by water. In the town of Feliz, 80 kilometers from the state capital, Porto Alegre, a massively swollen river swept away a bridge that connected it with the neighboring city of Linha Nova. Operators reported electricity, communications and water cuts across the state. According to the Civil Defense Agency, more than 24,000 people had to leave their homes without internet, telephone service or electricity. Residents struggled to provide updates or information to their relatives living in other states. Helicopters flew continually over the cities while stranded families with children awaited rescue on the rooftops. Colombia has become the latest Latin American country to announce it will break diplomatic relations with Israel over its military campaign in Gaza. But the repercussions for the South American nation could be broader than for other countries due to long-standing bilateral agreements over security matters. Colombia and Israel have signed dozens of agreements on wide-ranging issues, including education and trade, since they established diplomatic relations in 1957. But nothing links them closer than military contracts. Colombian President Gustavo Petro on Wednesday described Israel's actions in Gaza as genocide and announced his government would end diplomatic relations with Israel effective Thursday. But he did not address how his decision could affect Colombia's military, which uses Israeli-built warplanes and machine guns to fight drug cartels and rebel groups, and a free trade agreement between both countries that went into effect in 2020. Also in the region, Bolivia and Belize have severed diplomatic relations with Israel over the Israel-Hamas war. Security cooperation has been at the center of tensions between the two countries. Israel said in October that it would halt security exports to Colombia after Petro refused to condemn Hamas' October 7 attack on southern Israel that triggered the war and compared Israel's actions in Gaza to those of Nazi Germany. In February, Petro announced the suspension of arms purchases from Israel. Solomon Islands lawmakers elected former Foreign Minister Jeremy Malnelli as Prime Minister Thursday in a development that suggests the South Pacific Island nation will maintain close ties with China. Malnelli won 31 votes in a secret ballot of 49 lawmakers who won general election on April 17th. Manelli used his first speech as leader to promise to govern with integrity and to put his nation's interests first. In a speech outside the National Parliament of Solomon Islands, he said, I will discharge my duties diligently and with integrity. I will at all times put the interests of our people and country above all other interests. The withdrawal of pro-Beijing former Prime Minister Manasseh Sogaver from the contest to make way for Manali as their party's candidate indicated the country could follow a similar direction. Sogaver had hoped to become the first Solomon's prime minister to maintain power in consecutive four-year terms following the election. During his previous term, China's influence increased more in the Solomons than anywhere else in the South Pacific. Sogaver switched diplomatic recognition from Taiwan to Beijing and struck a secret security pact that has raised fears of the Chinese Navy gaining a foothold in the region.
The British government said on Wednesday that authorities have started to detain migrants in preparation for them to be sent to Rwanda in the next 9 to 11 weeks, laying the groundwork for Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's flagship immigration policy. A law to pave the way for sending asylum seekers to Rwanda if they arrived in Britain without permission was approved by Parliament in April, and Sunak wants the first flights to take off in July. More than 7,500 migrants have arrived in England on small boats from France so far this year, and the government says the policy will deter people from making dangerous journeys across the channel. Human rights charities and unions opposed to the policy are expected to launch fresh legal challenges to stop the flights from taking off after the UK Supreme Court declared the policy unlawful last year. Images released by Britain's Interior Ministry on Wednesday showed a man being put in a van by immigration enforcement officials and another being led out of his house in handcuffs. A spokesperson said that the group's helpline had received calls from tens of people, adding that they still did not know who would be earmarked for the first deportation flight or when it would be attempted. The Sun newspaper reported on Tuesday that Britain sent its first asylum seeker to Rwanda under a voluntary scheme, a separate program from the deportation policy. South Korean Defense Minister Shin won sik said South Korea is considering sharing advanced military technology with the United States, the United Kingdom and Australia through the SOCO Akus partnership. Shin said the possibility was discussed during two days of meetings between South Korea and Australia's defense and foreign ministers that ended in the Australian city of Melbourne on Wednesday. The United States and the United Kingdom agreed in 2021 to provide Australia with a fleet of submarines powered by U.S. nuclear technology under the Akus agreement to counter a growing military presence from China. AUKUS is an acronym for Australia, the United Kingdom and the United States. The countries could cooperate on a wider range of security technologies including artificial intelligence, electronic warfare and hypersonic systems through what is known as the UK-US Pillar 2. Shin welcomed South Korea's invitation from the three AUK-US partners. Japan is also moving toward formal talks to become part of a UK-US Pillar 2's technology development and sharing. Australian Defence Minister Richard Marlis welcomed South Korean efforts to build on its relationship with Japan, which along with Australia, the United States and India formed a security dialogue known as the Quad. In Switzerland, the label of Nestle's Cerelec baby cereal says it contains no added sugar. However, according to a recent public eye investigation, the same product has 6 grams of added sugar per serving in Senegal and South Africa. In the Philippines, one serving of a version of the Cerelec cereal for babies 1 to 6 months old contains a whopping 7.3 grams of added sugar, the equivalent of almost 2 teaspoons. The double standards for how Nestle creates and markets its popular baby food brands around the world was alleged in a report from Public Eye, an independent, nonpartisan Swiss-based investigative organization and International Baby Food Action Network. The groups allege that Nestle adds sugars and honey to some of its baby cereal and formula in lower-income countries, while products sold in Europe and other countries are advertised with no added sugars. The disparities uncovered in the report, which was published in the BMJ in April, have raised alarms among global health experts. Nestle said on its website, We have reduced the sugar in many of our infant cereals. While there are added sugars in some, we are making progress towards reducing this further, as well as providing more options without added sugar. Public Eye sent 115 baby food products under the Cerelac and Nido brands marketed by the food giant in Africa, Asia and Latin America for lab testing. The investigation found that 94% of them had added sugar. The answer for last Friday is C, capacity. The hall was filled to capacity. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of Nestle adds sugars to baby food in low-income countries. Number 1. Serving 供应人吃的食物的一份 This recipe will be enough for 4 servings. Number 2. Whopping 巨大的,很大的 The company made a whopping $75 million loss. Number 3. Equivalent 相等的东西,等量,对应词 Breathing such polluted air is the equivalent of smoking 10 cigarettes a day. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comment section. The correct answer will be announced tomorrow. And that's all for today's Funday News. Be sure to tune into Funday News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I will see you next time. <laughs>